The Fed's latest interest rate decision is scheduled to come out at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, June the 15th and could have a significant impact on trading in markets, whether stocks or currencies or even commodities. The um, At one time, the Fed people had been thinking that the Fed could be ready to raise interest rates at this meeting that, because it's one of the ones that, uh, that has a press conference and the member projections uh, along with it. However, over the last few weeks, it's become clear that the Fed is, is unlikely to uh, to raise rates this time around there, there's two factors really driving it one was the uh, the concerns of uh, the fed raising interest rates right before the brexit referendum which uh, which there's a lot of uncertainty out there uh, regardless of, of what's happening although the problem was that if they did that it was going to have an influence on their uh, potentially on on their independence as, as a central bank if they start saying well we're not doing this because we're we're worried about uh, what other people are going to do uh, however the the fed ended up getting a reprieve from this from the soft non Farm payrolls figure, even though it's a bit of an outlier, it was way below ADP payrolls. There was no sign in jobless claims that 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 low number was coming. Uh, it's still, and there's a possibility that it could get revised upward later. Uh, still, it's enough. It, it's created enough uncertainty out there along with Brexit, for the Fed to hold off at this meeting. The, the Fed funds are pricing in a 0% chance of a rate hike. And, and so the decision's really not going to have that much of an impact on trading, but will have an impact on trading, though, is what does the Fed signal going forward? Following the... Uh, when the non-farm payrolls came out uh, we, that were weak, uh, Fed Chair Yellen talked a couple of days later, and and she uh, was basically talking up the overall U.S. economy and saying, yeah, yes, we had this soft data point, we'll keep an eye out for more, but that there's a whole pile of other U.S. data has been strong, and that's what's put the Fed on track towards an interest rate hike. There's been strong retail sales, which continued again today, uh, strong industrial production, we're going to get that tomorrow, uh, just before the Fed meeting, and, and a number of other data points have suggested that the U.S. economy overall has been picking up. And in fact, even if you look at the non-farm payrolls uh, number report, the unemployment rate fell. And, and Boston Fed Rosengren said that at 4.7%, he feels the U.S. is getting close to full employment. And that's another way you could look at this is job growth could be slowing because you're getting close to a, a, a fully employed U.S. labor market out there. So that's something else to uh, to consider uh, as, as we move forward. So what's going to be key of this Fed meeting is signaling. And, and Fed Chair Yellen herself mentioned the fact that the member projections are coming out this meeting uh, in addition to the statement. There, there's three ways that the Fed can signal what they're going to do in future. There's this Fed statement itself. There's not only includes what they say, but how many members actually dissent to the hawkish side and, and vote for an interest rate hike anyways. Uh, the second thing is the uh, the member projections, which isn't just the dot plot of Fed funds rates. It's also the... Um, GDP forecasts, inflation forecasts, and things like an employment rate forecast, getting a feeling of how do Fed members feel about the U.S. economy. And then the third thing is, is Fed Chair Yellen's press conference itself and the question period and how does she respond to things like that. So the Fed could signal towards... Uh, hawkishly and they could signal towards an interest rate hike uh, in July. Uh, they could do that through uh, a high number of dissenters, uh, hawkish dissenters on the vote. They could do that through raising GDP forecasts or for maintaining that dot plot at two rate hikes uh, this year, which has already come down from four. The, so there are a few ways they could do that. And of course, in her press conference, she could give any number of, of hints. The, currently, this, the Fed funds are pricing in about a 15% chance of an interest rate hike in July. But as we've seen in the past, it doesn't take much to move that number fairly quickly uh, and for the street to get back in line if, if the Fed chairs augustly. The question is, what might the markets do in response to that? Well, if we look at the stocks, stocks have already been starting to roll over here. We had a, a peak in April. Uh, we've had a, a lower high here in June, and markets are rolling over a bit. But if we look here at the RSI, bouncing around between 40 and 60 is indicative of a sideways trend. So perhaps we have a sideways trend here in the U.S. 30 between between about 17,300 and let's call it 18,180 to 200 or 18,000 here. And we're kind of bouncing around this 50 day moving average. But so the way traders could look at it, a hawkish Fed is, uh, is bearish for liquidity. The, the fast money that's been enjoying the liquidity party and low interest rates probably get upset and sell stocks uh, and, and drive the market down. On the other hand, a hawkish Fed would also be an indication of a strong U.S. economy, positive environment for corporate earnings, could then longer term, once the fast money washes out, could provide support to the stock market. If we go and look at the S&P 500 now, 
it's the uh, it's the same sort of story we're seeing here up above 2100 we're in kind of a range between about 2025 and let's call it 2125 uh, we just dipped below the 50-day moving average here RSI dipped below 50 but basically you're still holding 40 on the RSI so you could be in the sideways trend here so it's possible off of this news we could see volatility in both directions on this uh, on this announcement and of course we'll keep an eye on on, uh, on bonds as well uh, a lot of capital has been flowing into bonds because of the uh, uncertainty over what might happen with brexit and the fed and the bank of japan and the bank of england and the spanish election australia election there's a lot going on so we have seen some of that and we'll, we'll, the the uh, the fed signal will give us our first sense of clarity on on how some of these decisions uh, are shaking out the uh, other one we want to uh, uh, keep an eye on is the currency. Keep an eye on the U.S. dollar. Uh, the dollar index, I know this is a new chart here, but it's, in, it's hanging around 95. 95, in my opinion, is still pricing in two interest rate increases this year. Up at 100 was pricing in four. Down at 90 would be pricing in none. And it's bottomed out around 92 was pricing in probably one rate hike. One rate hike would be a December after the election. And that's an important thing, too, to think about when the Fed's timing. If the Fed signals a rate hike. Uh, some people are talking September. September would be difficult. It's right in the middle of the election campaign. October is out as well. The Fed usually stays away from the election campaigns. That keeps puts a lot more pressure on July. July is between the two conventions before the campaign really kicks off in earnest. And that's another thing. If we get a dovish Fed, if we get a really dovish Fed, we have to watch for that too. We could see volatility. You could see the fast money be happy briefly, but then you could see the uh, the dollar come down. You could see stocks come down because then people would start wondering, well, if you're not raising rates now all of a sudden, then perhaps the U.S. economy is not doing well. And some of the politicians out there may jump on that as well and say, you know, uh, Obama's mismanaged the economy or something like that if you get a, a Fed that's too dovish. So need to watch out for that too because how the Fed signals... May may not only have economic ramifications, it could also have political ramifications. Another reason why, if they're going to do something, they're more likely to do it sooner than later. The only time the Fed moved during the election campaign was in 2008, and that's when the whole U.S. banking system was collapsing all around them, and they, di they didn't have a choice. They couldn't wait any longer. So that's important. So we're looking really at July. If we don't see a July hike, you're more likely to look at one hike in December. That change of forecast to that could put pressure on the dollar index. The other thing you could do is move currencies and one of the currencies it could move is gold gold has been on a tear lately, uh, not only on, on, on uncertainty and, and, and also on the uh, the prospects of a more dovish Fed. Part of this big rally here was the uh, the June rate hike speculation coming off and, and flatly some of the July rate hike speculation coming off. But you've popped up from a, close to 1200 up to 1280. You've got a doji candle here. You're sitting on a, on a, a Fibonacci level starting to run into resistance. This could drop back. If U.S. dollar strengthened, there's a feeling that July's back on for a rate hike. We could see gold come down. If July is off for a rate hike, Gold could take a run at this next Fibonacci level up here near the 1300 level. One last market to talk about here, a dollar yen will uh, also be significant because t a few hours, about 12 hours, uh, 10 to 12 hours after the Fed meets, the Bank of Japan's meeting too. How is the Bank of Japan going to respond to what the Fed says? The G7 meeting is over. They've had a few months to figure out what, it, whether negative interest rates are working for them or not. People are now going to be asking, what's the Bank of Japan leaning towards? Could they do something this summer? They may not do something now, but people will be wondering if they'll act over the next couple of months. Yen has been strengthening against everything. It's been uh, particularly strong U.S. dollar here. It's down around 105. It's retesting this low. This low either ends in a big breakdown or a double bottom. And so keep an eye on uh, on dollar yen. The uh, other market to keep an eye on is uh, is cable pound U.S. dollar. Bank of England meets on Thursday morning, less than 24 hours later. They're expected to do absolutely nothing in the, a week before the Brexit uh, news. They may or may not hint on, on, what may or may, on what they may or may not do, depending on which side wins. But uh, keeping an eye here on uh, cable, uh, cable has been bouncing around here over the last day or so between 141 and about 142 and a half. Brexit polls have been showing the Leave side continuing to gain momentum. That's why we've seen this weakness here 
here in the last couple of days. Uh, we do have momentum pointing downward for cable, but a dovish Fed could put a floor under cable and actually help that to rebound. A hawkish Fed could drive this down towards the retest of this April low here near 140. So cable could also be active on the news of uh, what comes out of the Fed meeting.